now that the strainer posts and intermediate posts concrete are set, it's time to start running some barbed wire. After talking to some knowledgeable fencing folk, it was time to have a crack at tying off the first run. After realising I should have gone around the post twice with the wire, I decided to cut it off and start again. It's not OCD, it's just doing things correctly. At least someone was enjoying the show. What's going on, buddy? Once we knock these other posts in, this wire will sit in that top U shape. Just sit in there, so they'll all have to go. Uh, 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 they'll yeah. be 1200 out of the ground. How come they only sit in there? Uh, well, then we go to a up with this. That's your job. Uh, okay. Alright, so I'm going to drive slowly away. Okay. <laughs> um, I probably wouldn't be near it, Craig. Just in case. Because if it whips out, it'll just cut you. Now we run out the barbed wire about 160 metres away to the intermediate post. So now I'm going to do the same from the other end. Because the intermediate post does not have a strain at either side of it, it's best to run from both ends to it in the middle and then tension the wires from the middle evenly if possible. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Mm, the ground's a bit moist just here.
stirring up the mud and water with the tractor tyres releases a fairly unpleasant smell. Not unlike when we were digging the mud out of the bottom of the dam. third ever barbed wire knot. Practice makes perfect. Calibrating our paces to try and get four meters between star pickets. Rinse and repeat. Around 40 star pickets required for this 160 metre run back to the intermediate post. About every tenth post we put a maxi post, which is 2.1 metres tall and we still only leave 1200 millimetres above the ground. Turns out the human pacing calibration wandered a bit, so the post crew decided to remeasure each section with the tape measure and collect all the excess posts. The chain strainers we had did not have a hook on one end to use on a plain post, so a plain piece of fencing wire was used around the intermediate post to winch the chain strainer off. I headed to the middle of the run to take the barbed wire off the ground so that it would more easily tension and not grip everything along the ground. You can see the chain strainer wiggle as I flick the wire. Another 
short length of plain wire on the intermediate post to set up the second chain strainer. These strainers work by walking jaws along the links in a chain. I didn't get any footage of it up close, but I will no doubt get some on later fences. Alright, so let's get some cranking on them. of the barbed wire touching the ground as we try and evenly crank both sides of the intermediate post. Excuse me, just got to land this plane real quick. to get the barbed wire up off the ground. This will help us keep a straight line using the wire. Are you going to take me? Righto, now we can tie the barbs off onto the intermediate post and the top strand should be complete. Oh, now our plane's coming in from the other direction.
here's some of the time lapse anyway. It gives you a good idea how the top strand is used as the straight line for putting the posts in. As you can see, we stayed until all the star pickets were in, manually, not using a powered post driver. Yeah. Now to run the rest of the wires. The problem was, we were putting the wire on the outside of the star pickets. Because of trees and embankments, the tractor could not fit on the outside of the fence. This meant we had to manhandle the wire off the spool over the original barb run to get it onto the other side of the star pickets. What could possibly go wrong? Working with barbed wire is like working with very angry Velcro. It snags on everything, including itself. This time it turns out the wire handle of the spool caught the legs. Don't! Oh. Ding! By finishing each barbed wire run above the plane wire attachment point on the intermediate pole, we were able to slide the plane wire down to attach the next run. Learning from our mistakes, we decided to use some plastic cones on either side of the spool to stop the drum rubbing against the legs.
Lucky I had safety glasses on and not just safety squints. Go on. Many hours later. As well as the plastic cones, we also wired the whole spool back against the headboard on the carryall for more stability. Is that another strand now? Is it the file strand? Yep. Mm. Just carry those with me for a little minute. Mm. Good yeah, we're going to go up and over the whole shebang. Stop to pick up our chief wire twister, then on our way to the final strand. Looks like there's even enough time for a conducting lesson. And here we have the rare glimpse of the Chief Wire Twitcher in action. In the background you can hear the song of an idle child after a hard day's work. for this section.